testing best practices. I hope we all agree we need to test. And when we receive emails, comments on a blog, phone calls, and somebody's telling us, I have an upgrade problem, help me. Or often it starts with I hack, I have a customer with an upgrade problem, then we know in 90 to 95% of all cases, it's not an upgrade problem. It's mostly a performance issue after upgrade. And sometimes not only one performance issue. In rare cases, it's also like an install or whatever issue, but performance, it's typically the top category for issues after you change something. And I guess this is also the reason why you are watching this seminar right now with us. There's exactly one way to mitigate that risk. And this only one way is testing. Now, as we work in reference projects with people out there, we see typical testing mistakes. And this is just an excerpt of what we see and what we saw out there. And we can just tell you here, don't do that or try to avoid this, no matter how big the constraints are. Only a subset of data used artificially created data sets, outdated data from a year ago, or uh, what makes me always smile, testing done on a laptop. We had that, believe me. Or we had like terabyte installations of HP in production and the testing was done on Linux. Yeah, it can work, it's, but it's, this is not ideal. I hope we all agree. No testing tools used, especially if you take some of the previous uh, parts and then you have no testing environment, no testing tools, then it's bad. This is asking for trouble. And also no stale stats refresh, but we'll cover this today as well. The worst thing, real experts fix it after go live. Not cool, believe me. We had that. We had somebody on an open world on stage. I sent Roy to such a talk and he came back and I saw Roy only twice uh, in the last 13 years since we worked together with a really strong neck and a red hat. And this was one of them uh, because I sent him to a talk at OW and said, this guy was on stage telling everybody that fix uh, testing is just a waste of time and real experts fix it off the go life. Yeah, you can try that. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend that. <laughs> Don't, please. And when you test, uh, we work with customers globally. And in some countries, it's really a pattern that people want to reach test completeness. And then cycles take three or four years until you can go live. Don't do that for a very simple reason. Uh, we always try to reach something like 80 to 90% test completeness. But reaching really the final 20 or 10%, you will put in the same amount, the same effort, the same resources, the same costs as you already put into the project to reach 80 or 90%. So test completeness, I wouldn't go for that. There's always a little bit of risk involved and Today's seminar is really meant to show you, you can deal with this. We go to 80% and still, if something fails, we have the right things in place to fix that once we went live. 